much, Margot. Welcome, everybody. I'm happy and pleased to host this panel. It's the only thing between you and lunch, so we'll try to make it as painless as possible as you work up that appetite. I would like to welcome to the stage Thomas Girard from CS Group, Marc Nizet from Telespatio, Florian Schneider from CGI, Julio Vivero from GMV. Hi, Julio. And we also have Charlotte Leta Media from OVH Cloud. Please uh, take a seat. We have to share microphones here. I'll be seated, but uh, very happy to have these esteemed speakers who are going to talk about very, a very, I would say, uh, interesting topic at the crossroads of what many organizations are looking at today, which is security, the cloud, and then the ground system. And of course, what goes through most of that is data, space data, and there's a profusion of data. There's a huge amount of data being generated, not just by Earth observation satellites that come down, but also space situational awareness, and of course, the communication satellites that link either via point to multipoint or mesh networks and that are increasingly making use of cloud infrastructure here on the ground. So my first question, and I'll be in no particular order, but I'm sure that many of you will want to have a microphone and then answer that question. And the first one is that we did look at this space cloud uh, market. And one of the things that we realized is that there is, first of all, hyperscalers in that market, and they're making quite a bit of, a, uh, uh, of an imprint in the market by investing, by targeting many markets, by partnering with sa satellite-based uh, solutions and operators, and their role is basically expanding. And I think their penetration of the market is really something that uh, we've looked at that didn't really surprise us, but are in two main markets, data downlink, which is what we normally see from space-based platform, but also communication. So my first question would be given this element of increased competition or maybe cooperations, for you, what are those key markets that you're looking at in terms of using secure cloud for satellite ground segment infrastructure and data. Who would like to take that? Please, Julio. Well, I, I might uh, start. Um, well, I don't know if you know GNV. We are not cloud providers. We are integrators of cloud. We do work with a lot uh, of the cloud providers in Europe and, and abroad. Um, we do work a lot and growing exponentially with uh, cloud solutions for, for our customers. There's a clear need and a clear trend to, to use the clouds, both private clouds and public clouds, and hybrid solutions for private and public. And this uh, new space thing um, is clearly bringing up new opportunities, uh, new needs. Uh, there are a lot of factors that are coming that have specific needs for, for having ground segment services. And probably they don't want to have their own. They don't have even potentially the, the, the strength to build their own. And uh, the possibility to use uh, ground segments as a service, so to say, based on cloud solutions, it's really uh, an essential solution or, or a, it's a very useful opportunity for them. But the, it's really important that these solutions are obviously secure. And uh, cybersecurity is essential there to, to guarantee that the service uh, is, is uh, pro uh, well, working uh, perfectly and the data is secure and the confidentiality of the data you have there. The issue of the ownership, of course, it's always there. But I think the trade-off is clearly beneficial in, in those sense. And it's clearly a market that uh, will, will continue growing in my perspective in the future. So that does increase the market size from what I understand, correct? Yeah. Please. I mean, especially what Julio just said, with the growing presence of hyperscalers, you know, you get a lot of out of the box, right? They, they offer a lot like, like services, you can book what you want, you just click it and then you get it. I think there's lots of benefits also for, for the ground segment so that you can have a shorter time to market as you very well explained in your last presentation, but also it comes with a, with a little bit of a twist because you need to make sure that, that your solution is still safe. And that means that you need to take care of what happens in the cloud, right? Because at the end, a hyperscaler would just provide you with the infrastructure, et cetera, but that's on the cloud, right? So you need to make sure that whatever ground segment you hook up to the cloud, so to say, 
it's secure in the cloud and that's where the solution needs to come from and that's where you need a, a holistic solution also that provides you with the right aspects. And for you, Mark, how does that work? Well, you know, uh, Telespacio is basically uh, uh, an operator and a provider of ground segment solution. And uh, we are trying to take advantage of, uh, of, of the cloud and uh, what actually is provided. For instance, uh, we have products and services that are interfacing to the AWS ground stations, OK? Um, now, <clears throat> there are still problems uh, that are essentially related to the use of American cloud. Uh, the Cloud Act is still a problem for quite a number of our uh, customers, OK? But uh, roughly speaking, uh, it is, we, we, we consider that it is an element with which we have, to which we have to take into account, and we are trying to integrate into our solution. Uh, but Telespacio generally, anyway, provide a uh, ground segment based on uh, uh, services provided by a number of actors. Actually, we are not relying only on our ground station network. And this is a, this is a nice addendum. Now, whatever has been said about maintaining the, the security in the cloud is, of course, an issue. Because uh, even if the cloud provider are already providing a lot of security measures, a lot of work still has to be done to secure your own solution in the cloud. So the work is, uh, still remains to be done on expanding the service. Is that correct? For you, Thomas, how does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Just a disclaimer, CS is not a cloud provider. OK? It's a, it's a system integrator, mainly based historically in defense, yeah. but also in space. Uh, I think when we talk about data, data downstream, we talk about a lot of things, very different things, mm -hmm. uh, which are not an all compatible with a cloud approach, actually. When you talk about uh, services like, like uh, telecommunication or uh, earth observation, we need a lot of compute uh, power, we need a lot of storage power. This is mostly public data. So, yes, we can use cloud and hyperscale, and it is... Uh, uh, very aligned with a cloud usage and cloud philosophy. But when we talk about uh, uh, small data or, or, or specific data or même even government data, which means to be private, secured, it's very difficult to mutualize the resource, both uh, storage and compute, huh? uh, the resource between uh, the commercial one and the governmental one. It's very difficult because of the regulation, because of the risk, because of everything, actually. So I think maybe the cloud is not very uh, designed. The principle of the, the cloud, which is the mutualization, the industrialization of the, 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 the computer resource, is not very compatible with a full uh, high level of cybersecurity, level of cybersecurity. So it depends what, uh, what we talk, actually, on, on data download. So uh, we have a cloud provider here. We'll ask Shalha to answer that question as to and why. We, we are partner. Well, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but why is it not designed for every solution? Uh, just up, up, yeah. Why is it not designed for every solution, like Tomaj just said? Yeah. Uh, you, you, come, uh, you, you use cloud infrastructure uh, not because of security, but to scale to uh, leverage of managed services uh, and to be more concentrated in your activity, your business, uh, and to delegate your infrastructure to a cloud provider. Um, so you don't come for security, but security is a must. Uh, and according to your, your type of data or uh, the compute you need, uh, you will find the portfolio of product uh, to use or not. Um, in OVH Cloud, we have a large portfolio of services, of infrastructure, compute, network, storage, and we are um, we have an ambition to be to bring security, sovereignty, and uh, we are offering product by product the highest level of uh, of security and protection. So, you, you you according to what you are looking for, you you will find what you what you need or not. It will bring you some um, agility, some scale, some ex geographical expansion for your activity. And uh, this is uh, the, the, the work of a cloud provider to, to yeah. host, manage services, manage infrastructure with the right level of security. So in terms of uh, security level, we, we are compliant with uh, uh, 
uh, ISO that's a must, HDS, and second plot for some product that is the highest uh, step of uh, compliance. Uh, all our uh, managed uh, VMware platform is Secnum Cloud today, so this is, uh, this is uh, allowing some uh, activation uh, company or organization. It's allow uh, uh, more agility and more scale. Thank you. Florian, you wanted to add something there. Oh, sorry. You, you. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's not so much a discussion whether to go to cloud or not to go to cloud. I think the cloud concept, the, uh, it's valid in any case, or almost any case, the majority of the cases. The discussion is to go to a public cloud or a private cloud. Yeah. That's the key discussion. But I think, I mean, cloud by itself provides a lot of benefits. Cybersecurity can be one of them, because you apply this, uh, let's say, coherently and consistently the cybersecurity controls once you are in a private cloud, for example, to all elements that are running there. It's easier to apply, to apply uh, cybersecurity measures uh, consistently in a private cloud than in a, let's say, traditional infrastructure, which is more dispersed, can be more heterogeneous, et cetera. And apart from cybersecurity, also provides additional benefits from resilience, for maintainability, et cetera. So I think uh, moving to the concept of cloud-native solution, for me, it's, it's clear, and I think uh, almost everyone is doing that. Then the discussion is whether you want to go to a public cloud or you want to stay private, and then you have other considerations as such uh, the data confidentiality, the ownership, and all the liabilities and other aspects. But uh, I think that's a key difference. Did you want to add something, Flo? Yeah, what I was going to add was that it all comes down to what we call from CGI the cyber wheel, which is you need to access the risk first, right? And that is not necessarily depending if you use a cloud solution or an on-premise solution, but you need to assess first, what is my risk scenario? What are my threats? What do I want to implement? What are my use cases? And those should drive your security decisions from day one and not like at the end, as Massimo already said in the presentation before. You need to do this first. And then the second part of this wheel, so to say, is to protect the business. And this is then depending on whether I have a cloud solution, etc. And you see where this is going. And this ties into the final circle, and that is the, the operation with confidence, where you then are sure I got the, uh, the cloud under control and know what I'm doing, and therefore I can take the right decisions. Thank you. You can ask questions if you want through the app. i uh, be happy to have those questions in the latter part of the panel today. But I think it's very interesting to note that there's already a discussion between what's private you know, and what's public. And we know that this is a big tagline for a lot of uh, public uh, cloud, provi uh, cloud providers, that the security is key and <clears throat> paramount for them. And there's various levels of which you can buy. We actually saw a, in a very good presentation earlier on from OVH Cloud about you know, various ways that uh, data is stored. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, uh, it's a different approach for each of them. But the next question I have is actually on the approach for the different markets that we are seeing in the space industry and satellite industry. Of course, we build a lot of rockets. You know, we, build a lot of satellites, we launch them, and then they get used for various uh, different applications. And my question to you is really, what's your approach to expand across those different space segments? Do you have something very specific for each of them where you're taking security into consideration and the storage of sensitive information? Is it parallel for each market? Who wants to take that? Is it something that you feel like to Espacio, well, if we're going to talk to this type of customer or, it, or this segment, we need to have better security or more security? And what's your approach for that? Well, actually, uh, um, our approach is to look at the, the, the security issue globally. OK? So we are working a lot, for instance, uh, helping ESA with uh, their, their new roadmap, where actually they look at the, the problem globally. But we are focusing in the uh, space mission security monitoring in this part. And then already we see that, for instance, uh, initially we had uh, a lot of requirements in the traditional mission. We know, I mean, Galileo and things where we were involved. And now this is expanding towards first in a lot of institutional mission, a lot of institutional context, but also operational uh, commercial operators who are actually looking for solutions that security solutions that do not really stick to the IT level. They want basically to see solutions that are also incorporating all the space, the security of the space element. And they know that if they want to do this, they have to speak basically to a company that is also involved in space, understand operation, 
understand the context, the possible legal uh, implication of things. Okay. So from this perspective, actually, you can basically move. Today, we, we see that a lot of um, opportunities we had that typically didn't really require a very high level of security now are moving towards this and are requiring also, as was already discussed, a lot of security by design, security from the beginning of the mission implementation. So design, we come back to that. Do you want to add something to that, Thomas, on the, the various uh, approaches that you have if, towards the uh, space and security market? Yeah, uh, I think in, in, in complex system and system of systems such as the space system, the key point for cybersecurity of today eh, is, is cryptography, actually. Uh, and and to, to make a system of system work at the right level of security, it means that the ground segment uh, uh, tenants and the space segment tenants have to exchange, have to do the same kind of cryptography, kind of level of assurance. So they have to exchange. They have to, to, to put the same algorithm and so on. So today we use classical cryptographic, so this means that we need to exchange keys. Uh, and I think the cryptography is the only one, the, 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 the only good way, guaranteed way, with a high level of assurance to segregate data and to segregate systems for, for a time, for a time, because every algorithm has a, <laughs> has a lifetime. And, and so tomorrow we can use what we call post-quantum cryptography. I think everyone is, is uh, aware of that uh, today. Uh, so the different type of algorithm which has, uh, which are resisting from a quantum computer, uh, quantum cryptanalysis. But tomorrow, what we see from, for, for example, from EuroQCI is a quantum uh, distribution key. It's a first step for me for the utilization of quantum usage for security, for segregation of data and securing this system. So the first step, for example, for ES2 is to have a POC at the, we talk about 27, 2027, a POC for QCI to exchange keys to permit to use post-quantum cryptography after that to segregate data and to segregate system. And I think it's the only strong, uh, str strong way to, to, to segregate system and to lower the attack surface, even for the ground system, but also for the satellite one, actually. So we've already said it, you know, not even 15 minutes into the panel, that quantum is the way to go. Quantum is uh, yeah. pretty much yeah. you know, what you're... We no. have to. It's like the cloud, we have to go. <laughs> you have to go into the quantum. Do you agree with that? Is that approach that you guys are promoting? Uh, we are looking into quantum a lot as well in GMV. We have several, several initiatives going on. Um, we have a project which is basically studying different use cases, uh, comparing the, the advantages and disadvantages of using quantum computing uh, towards uh, normal computing. Because it's not always, uh, I mean, it's not directly straightforward that uh, any particular application is better in quantum computing. Um, we are also in other activities uh, for quantum key distribution as well and uh, also uh, building a quantum computer for uh, seven, uh, a supercomputing center in Spain. Um, I think that to adapt the cloud to the different segments, uh, you, you cannot have uh, one solution fits all. Because I agree with what Mark said before, that uh, you need to start with what are the goals of that company, what are the risks, what are the threats, uh, some companies might put the focus on data confidentiality, and some other might put uh, data can be public, and therefore the confidentiality of data they don't care. Um, therefore, encryption of the payload for them is not uh, crucial. Maybe they they want to put more the focus on availability and other aspects. So, I think the key is to have cloud services or a cloud platform that uh, has a suite of products and a suite of capabilities in terms of cybersecurity, in terms of uh, monitoring what is running there on, um, and defining several, let's say, uh, orchestration of, uh, capabilities for the cloud and uh, defining um, the, the several availability measures for, for the solution and defining uh, also security monitoring capabilities, etc. Uh, and therefore, for every, for each and every customer to define, okay, you need this subset of activities, you need that other subset, maybe you need uh, some additional things. 
and that's for me the way to go. So would that mean that security for space clients is a menu or is it embedded in what you offer? What's preferable? Um, it's not a menu in the sense that I think it's um, you need to have all the dishes of the menu. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then you need to decide together with the customer what is more convenient to them. It's not just for the customer to decide, I believe. Well, mm -hmm. obviously, they have the final word mm -hmm. as you, when you go to a restaurant. But I think you do this to do this specific analysis of what are the pros and cons of every day, any decision you take. Um, it all comes with uh, particularities. So, uh, for example, the, the going with the example of the private or public cloud. So you want to have uh, to use a public cloud. You have some advantages. I mean, um, it's high, very highly that uh, the private cloud has uh, more security controls you will ever have at your private cloud, and better teams. But on the other hand you don't have visibility of everything that is happening there. And you don't have the capacity to decide how to react to, a, to an incident. Uh, you depend on the cloud provider for that. And if the cloud provider believes that uh, the best solution for the whole cloud they are running is something which is maybe not the best solution for you, but lack. Uh, so yeah. there are some trade-offs that need to be taken into account, some pros and cons. And it depends on every, every, so every particular case to yeah. decide. Uh, I like how to uh, yeah. the menu. I was going to say that with every good restaurant, you should have the right dishes and not all the dishes, because <laughs> then you end up having too many of them. So, yes. too but many. I, what I was going to say is that post quantum is from our experience of the last 40 years. It's encryption is one part, but there's others that that come first, such as the access to the cloud, for instance, in the cloud, and that is going along the lines like zero trust, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and this is where the menu comes together then and where you build all the pieces and then define a custom solution. And that comes back to the original question, what do you offer as the storage solution to the client? And that is, you offer the right dishes from the right menu, so. Good. Thank you. If you have questions, please make sure you put them on the app. We'll have those uh, towards the latter part of this, uh, uh, this panel. Now, on the space segment, I'm going to come back to the ground. But on the space segment, we're seeing more and more software-defined satellites. And of course, that does, let's say, uh, increase the level of exposure. How, how, what's the name that uh, is the threat vectors are increasing? Now, we've seen this because on the ground, at some point, <clears throat> there's been some attacks. We know those fairly simple ones. How do you see the ground segment players who use the cloud uh, today working more efficiently with the space segment players? to actually enable you know, a reduction of those exposure to threats that come from having more software, which is you know, the, the, the main dissipation or distribution vector for uh, a lot of attacks. Mark? OK, in, in the case of Telespacio, we have a, a significant advantage because we are in the space alliance with us. So basically, we see both sides of, of the problem. Okay. But in general, it is true that the, the, there is an issue that is to be discussed when we discuss with other uh, customers, for instance, uh, essentially in the new space domain that are providing other types of platform. There are, there are quite a number of issues that are related to encryption, for instance, as was discussed before, but to other types of threats that actually are applicable to the space segment. Now, we know also, for instance, as we, are, we are developing security monitoring uh, uh, solutions. And it is very difficult, of course, to develop something in the absence of standardization, especially in this, uh, in this field, to develop solutions that are applicable to a large range of, of customers. So basically, it, it turns into a dialogue with quasi every provider, every manufacturer, to actually understand what their platform are and what actually we have to provide on the other side. Um, now, of course, with the evolution of the, of the system, the evolution of the market, we can expect that part of this problem is is resolved, okay, and that uh, there will be in the future uh, uh, solutions that can be applied more widely. But for the moment, we are still acting in a one-to-one -one discussion, and as I said, typically, of course, we have the discussion with our main partner. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to address that question? How to work better between space segments and ground segment? Yeah, maybe adding to that that cloud is not necessarily directly contributing to a more secure environment. It can, if you use it the right way, right? 
But I wouldn't say that cloud makes your system automatically more secure. It just provides you a, a test, uh, so a bed where you can build on using using the cloud the, uh, the the cloud as as it as you explained with the right certifications. You maybe have an accredited cloud. Um, you have the good systems in place, but you still need to make sure that whatever you develop, whatever API you develop, whatever application authentication you put on the cloud, is is still secure. So that should be added to, uh, to that. Do you agree with that, uh, Charlotte? Yes, uh, I, I agree. Uh, for me, uh, security is uh, n uh, is no compromise, and whatever is infrastructure on premise, private or on the cloud. Uh, when we are um, dealing with uh, strategic and sensible data, uh, and that is the case in the new space, uh, we, 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 have to, we need to be at the right level of security. Uh, we were talking about uh, sovereignty. Sovereignty is, uh, is ambition to be independent from any influence, to protect our data from any influence attack and uh, we have to isolate our computer data from a a a anyone and whatever is infrastructure uh, we need to guarantee this isolation and that means for any IT team and for any cloud provider and OVH is part of this uh, of, is an actor in the in the cloud services we need to provide uh, the right level of, uh, of protection it means uh, for data uh, immutability, we need to cipher our uh, data when during the communication, when it's stored, we need to encrypt with a, with a personal key. So all these enablers to provide the right level of isolation needs to be part of our uh, product, of our services, uh, whatever, uh, wherever is the uh, the, the process, the workflows, uh, uh, on-premise or cloud, we need to provide the right level of, um, of protection to be uh, sure that we don't have any influence, that our data is not stolen, or that any uh, hacker <laughs> or uh, someone uh, mal, uh, with mal, uh, bad intention cannot access to our infrastructure. Because they're getting smarter and smarter and they're using a lot of very uh, astute means of reaching both the space and also more often than that than not the ground segment. Maybe you want to add, touch on that, Thomas. Yeah, yeah just, just to, to say I totally agree with your demarche because I, I dream of a, of, a, of a tool. Massimo talked to the, about tools, security tools, the tools which can provide a strong segregation, for example, for cryptography on public cloud to use public cloud also on restricted and classified information. This is the tool you have to to create tomorrow us industrial for the space domain and defense domain to, to provide a, a, a more agile and a more uh, modern way to, 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 to create information system classified, enfin, multi-level uh, information system. So wait and see, maybe someone uh, will, uh, will invent it, maybe, uh, maybe us, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> We saw in your presentation earlier, Charlotte, you did put, put out there some pricing for storage. Very interesting. It goes from 1.3 euros per terabyte to 25 euros per terabyte. And most of that, you know, 60% was the, the euro 30. So it's good, you know, good news for us. And only about 10% was for the 25 euros per terabyte and more. Now, is that a level of, let's say, cost that we can expect? to be translated in, you know, in the general sense for the type of data that transits through space systems? In other words, is there like a, almost a 1 to 24 you know, factor between what's eh, not really important, but then what's really important is like 24 times more expensive? Is that the sort of scale that we should look at? Yeah, exactly. In the space industry, uh, the volume of data, the storage is quickly uh, a constraint for uh, organization or company because uh, they are collecting, processing, and serving huge volume of data. And um, as a cloud provider, we offer services. Uh, we have the advantage to mutualize 
resources, development, management of product, and we offer a granularity in our compute and storage solution that helps organization and uh, company to, uh, to uh, rationalize their infrastructure according to their need. When you are using some uh, storage, you don't need performances all the time. You need performances when you do some ingestion, when you are collecting the satellite photography or all the data uh, set available for your uh, application. So you need performances when you are doing the ingestion and you need performances when you are doing your processing, when you will analyze uh, your data. But when you are serving the data, um, to your user, when you are providing the report, when you are managing your user data, when you are doing some analytics, when you are doing your backup, you don't need a high performance storage or high performance compute, you need more versatile uh, infrastructure. And for that, you will uh, look for a more costly uh, tier of storage or compute side. And for archiving, you were talking about archiving data. Uh, when you look for um, a right infrastructure to archive your data, you will uh, design uh, support specifically for these use cases. Magnetic band, it's not old school on magnetic band. It still exists. <laughs> it still exists, and, and lots of uh, innovation are, are coming in the magnetic band. It's a good support to archive data yeah. because it's offline. It doesn't consume electricity. It's the density of storage. Hard is, to destroy. Uh, it's hard to destroy. So it's uh, protection. It's immutable by design. Yeah. And uh, the carbon footprint is uh, very good. Uh, we, we have designed a data center for for archive, for data center for uh, archive, you can store one exabyte of data in uh, 300 meters square. Wow. So, and we have built this year, for, we have put in production yesterday, four data centers specifically designed for archiving. Um, when you are uh, an organization or a company, you can not optimize your infrastructure by use case. Uh, so, you design only one generic versatile infrastructure. But if you want to optimize your infrastructure by use case to optimize electricity, cost, and, um, and uh, by use cases, going to a cloud provider helps you to have access to more granularity, to optimize, to be more frugal, to uh, have more means. So this is uh, what we are doing. We are providing a, a deep catalog of products to, um, to do some tiering uh, for the data, as an example. And tiering, it's using different class of storage to put the data at the right place at the right time. Please, Julian. Yeah, uh, related with the data, and I fully agree with you, there is um, the space sector is a uh, high, uh, uh, increasing need of um, sending or satellites are downloading a lot of information and storing that, etc. There is also an interesting trend that is to try to uh, compute more on, in, on, space in space and uh, therefore send less data, only the data that which is actually processed because you have processed it there. And this introduces also a new aspect to consider in terms of cloud. There are also even initiatives of building cloud services in a spacecraft up there. On the so, moon. Eh? Yeah. On the moon. Yes, in the moon as well. Yeah. And a kind of uh, space stations, which is a data center space station. That is also an initiative which is, uh, which is uh, ongoing. And uh, this will be very interesting also for, for the cloud, because uh, I guess uh, if you could somehow integrate both space and ground facilities, cloud facilities, somehow to manage everything in a single, let's say, uh, management center, that could provide additional functionalities which could be interesting. And also a an comprehensive view from the cybersecurity point of view. Yeah, I could see that happening, but then you need a lot of capital, right? Because it, it costs money yes. to be able to offer more services, right? Okay, good. We have questions already. I've seen this on the app. This is great. Obviously, you guys are doing a good job to stimulate you know, discussion. One is from Jan. He says, how do we integrate security by design in a complex, hybrid, 
modern cloud and legacy on-premise space ecosystem where the weakest link will be the target? <laughs> Great question. This is the question right there. You see it on the screen. How do we integrate security by design? I think you, you touched on that, Thomas. Uh, may maybe a few words, a quick word. I, I think space segment, yes. Yeah. I think space segment is, is the look alike the, the industrial segment because we are talking uh, for, for, for industrial segment of, uh, of brownfield, greenfield, and how to uh, compromise uh, about the security uh, in, mainly in, in brownfield. Uh, there is no magic answer. The, the, the answer is there, there is no magic okay. answer. Too bad, sorry. <laughs> and we have, to, we have to make compromise on, on legacy system no, like to it. try to secure, to try to harden, to may, maybe make some, some perimeter security, but it's very difficult. So it's not going to be at the same level for everybody? No. no. no okay. No. No. Good point. Good question there. Since you brought it up, I thought you should answer it. Uh, next one from Daniel says, we're a new space data processor selling imagery as a service. We make great use of public cloud in the hosting of our commercial infra and data processing. Aside from typical security initiatives, what, if any, should we be doing to provide assurance to institutional clients? Who wants to take that? Maybe you should, Charlotte. <laughs> to provide a guarantee or insurance to institutional uh, customer, I think compliance uh, is something important. We are uh, fully participating to, to this uh, organization, consortium organization uh, to provide um, a guarantee. We provide services SecNum Cloud. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's not easy to be SecNum Cloud, to de design product SecNum Cloud, uh, but uh, it can provide assurance to this kind of uh, organization. So in OVH Cloud, and we are building blocks to uh, offer our product in the SecNum Cloud ecosystem. Uh, today, we have like a part of our offer that is in SecNum Cloud. And step by step, we are working to provide all our catalog of product in the SecNum Cloud ecosystem. That's, I think, the highest level to provide assurance to uh, this institution. Can you define how you do that? Because I'm not very sure I understand the concept. Yeah, the concept, well, it's, it's a compliancy to, to provide second cloud services. It's about software isolation. So you have to comply to uh, security rules. I was talking about uh, encryption, uh, access. Um, so there is some basic rules of security, but uh, it's not, it's the first step. The second step, it's how you run and operate your services. So uh, we are operating data center. We uh, need to comply to uh, who, what, who is the team who is managing this and operating this data center. What are the process of uh, so the run team, how they access to the data center, how they operate, how they act in the system, how they use the logs. So there are. Uh, by design, our products are secured. And the second step is, by design, all our operation, our process will comply with this uh, exigence of, uh, of, of second cloud. Thank you. That helps. Anybody wants to take that question for Daniel? Good question. I hope it answered your, uh, your uh, I hope it was that uh, some of the answers were able to give you, you know, for the answer on typical security initiatives. Uh, we have about 15 minutes left. I think there's another question also that came from uh, John. His question is, there seems to be a number of cloud level levels, independent service slash security. However, it's not so clear for individual services, a level of assurance, such as a common criteria or FIPS 140 like. Is this something that's being considered or remains the responsibility of the users? We haven't talked about the users here, really. We haven't talked about, for example, a ship owner like Maersk, who was attacked a few years ago and cost them $300 million. What's their responsibility you know, here? What, could you address this question? Thomas, maybe you have uh, some thoughts on this? 
Yeah, you know me, I have always uh, something to say. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's very difficult for, from, a, from a, a personal usage of, for the cloud to not to be responsible, actually. It's your data, it's your process, it's your yeah. uh, responsibility. You use the service yeah. as, we, as we... It's the same when, you, when we uh, design and build a, a, an information system. You, you run it, but you have a common shared responsibility with clients also. You, so it's there is no uh, commercial actually not commercial uh, individual certification for for the masses actually it's a it's a specific certification we talk about Secnum Cloud we talk about yes uh, common criteria on some specific uh, mainly cryptographic uh, appliance or, or, or cipher or HSM or, or so on so specific technical services but the service you build upon these services is up to you okay it's okay. up to you well, uh, so, you so in, in contracts that you have with your users the responsibility is mostly on them or is it on you to give that level of assurance no it's 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 shared. It's shared. It's shared. For example, you, you use the cryptographic tools at uh, HSM. You, you do a key ceremony to generate keys. Yep. You lost the key. It's your responsibility. You yeah. can't, you can't uh, blame the HSM provider to lose your key. Okay? Yep. It's the same for, for all the services. Like Everyone a home security. A yeah. Yeah. Like a home security. Okay. Please, Flo. I think personally, you need to consider the users as part of the system and therefore they become part of the risk analysis process in the first place. So yes, there will, ever, there will always be a certain level of responsibility left because it's still a human person or, or, or AI in the future maybe, but um, yeah. you still need to consider this in the beginning and incorporate this when designing the system and define the level of insurance with the user and and, and the responsibility associated to that. And then you can also bring in the cloud providers and define who is responsible in the cloud for which part. And that ties into what we said in the beginning. Please go ahead, uh, Charlotte. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It's a it has to be the responsibility of the user. Uh, it's more secure. Than <laughs> the they, 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 the users are the ones who are able to uh, categorize their data and identify which one is sensible, which, not, which one is less. We also need some open uh, environment, so all the data is not secured. It's also important to have some uh, non-secured data for any usage, for learning, for... Uh, so. Uh, the user know what he wants to do and the sensitivity categorization. And uh, for me, uh, it's, um, the user has to manage this security, but our, our role as a cloud provider is to provide tools that are easy to use. Uh, it's security has not, if the security compliance is too heavy, too costly to implement, it will not be used. And there we have an issue. So we, we need to provide a, an easy way to implement the security compliancy. So it's a no-brainer. It's security by design, and the people are using it. And then we are safe. And if we uh, are uh, doing a good design and that the security is, um, is, is a standard, then uh, it will be, uh, we will be, we, we, we will be uh, concentrated on other things. Thank you for that. Good answer. Yes, Julio. Yeah, if I may add, I, I, I fully agree. Uh, by the way, sorry, I changed your name before, <laughs> Florian. <laughs> um, I think the responsibility, I mean, the responsibility of the cloud provider or the service provider, in this case, it's a service, is to provide the service with the level of quality which is uh, defined. And that's, that's up to there. And then the user has a responsibility legally even to, to for their processes, if there is an incident in their processes, they need to guarantee um, that they actually were 
diligent in defining the level of security, in choosing the right service provider for the level of security they wanted, in verifying that the security they were receiving was adequate, etc. At the end, it depends all on the user. And if there is an incident, the, the responsibility will remain on them for the user process because they are responsible to define and to choose what is the adequate, adequate level of, of services if they choose uh, uh, cloud provider, which is not offering the right level of security for what they need, it's, it's the responsibility. Let's just say that th this is a very hypothetical question, although it, that seems to be how it happens. Attacks are usually, you know, surprise. <laughs> You're normally not warned that there'll be an attack, right? So the level of assurance there that's in that question here is very much, you know, uh, the responsibility for that level of assurance is still very much at the core, and we know other attacks will happen, and we know that there'll be systems that will be, you know, deployed to prevent those, and so it's kind of like an escalation, right? An escalation process. In, in this instance, really, truly, don't you think that the assurance level required is on the shoulders of the providers more than the user? Mark, yeah? If I may say something, I mean, the provider is only obliged to provide something according to the SLA that are in place. I mean, uh, if you go beyond the scope of the SLA, well, too bad. Somebody should have thought about it, but the user is always responsible, okay? So they buy something. Yeah. We know that for many potential customers, we have different levels of SLA that they would like for the service that we provide and ground station. I'm not speaking about the cloud. So basically, it is the same, it is the same approach. This is a contract, okay? Now, if, if something happens now that can fall into... Uh, I don't know, uh, force majeure, or I do not know what, then you, you may discuss. But otherwise, it is the SLA, I think, that, that defines uh, the, the level of responsibility of each party. Like in, the, in SACOM services, yes. Yes. Did you want to add something to this, uh, Florian, or you good? I think it's not only the SLA, because, I mean, you can define a lot of stuff in, in advance and negotiate and then make sure it works, but... I think you, you need to, 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 to come up with the right use cases of what the user could do because normally, and that's I think a report from IBM from last year said that it takes you 200 days usually to realize that there was a data breach, right? So, uh, I mean, it takes you 200 days to find out that it, the user might be wrong or, have some, or did something wrong. So, um, I want to see an SLA that says uh, you can wait 200 days. So this, <laughs> this is very challenging. You know what I'm trying to say. So you need to make sure that, that you, you find the right set of requirements and, and, and risk analysis that identifies as much as possible, not relying on SLA to, to cover for you if it should happen. Well, well but at the end, the SLA is just reflecting actually the level yes. of the requirements that you have agreed. Okay, So it's more or less the same thing. I mean, if you get the requirement wrong, you're, you're not going to go anywhere, okay? So it always boils down to the same thing. You, you, you've got this security by design, you need to make the analysis, you need to set up the requirement properly, and then you will get what you're paying for. Uh, we have uh, seven more minutes before the end. There's one more question actually that's tied to this that I wanted to ask you, and I would like to have each of you your very quick answer on this, and how can you work with customers to reassure them that spending more on security in the cloud will give them new business? Who wants to take that on? Uh, yes, Mark. So you, you mean security in the cloud or security in general? Both. <laughs> because I think now we, the, the tendency we see is that the, the, the customers, they want security because they've seen too many incidents. Yeah. They are scared for their image. They are scared for the, the description of their business. Um, no, I think what is simply happening is that if you do not provide a security level, no, probably you will not make any business in the, in the near future. So oh. you have to integrate this into your offering. And uh, it is clear that uh, a number of uh, users or of customers, they understand pretty well that this is going to cost them for the service that you are providing, but also internally, they have to develop the functions that are needed to basically support the security and understand what you are doing. And uh, a lot of them, at least with whom we are working today, they are working at defining the budgets that are specific to security to actually take care of this in the near future. Flo? I think security sells in this case, because if, if you can help the customer to achieve a certain level of security and can prove that it's resilient, 
that it scales in the cloud, that it's available, then it will sell itself. You know, it will create new business because you can prove I have a successful project, I have a successful program that's running these and that security measures. And if you can actually do that, it will create business on its own because it it creates a new use case, it creates a reference story, and that's that's I think the right answer to that. So business creation with you, uh, your customers. I, I fully agree with uh, what Mark and Florian has said already. I mean, um, uh, for me, the clear success we've been in, in, we've seen in the last years with the cloud use comes hand in hand with the fact that there has been very few incidents in, in security, in, big security incidents in cloud providers. Uh, otherwise, if uh, five years ago there were big incidents with Amazon, with Azure, with uh, OVH, with Google, people will not have moved their, uh, their infrastructure there. Uh, they will have never used. So that the, the regional level of security for the majority of people they are providing is what is boosting the, the cloud uh, business, actually. And I think it's, this is the best real example of uh, security cells. Do you concur with that, Charlotte? Yeah, in complement, yeah. Um, Business growth is driven uh, by innovation, not only, but uh, innovation can drive uh, business growth. And um, cloud infrastructure helps a company to be more agile and to accelerate in, a, in, in the business. I have a, a concrete example of um, a, a company who was developing uh, uh, 3D modeling software, and they were not sized to support all aviation company uh, with different software version with for their uh, IT on premise. So it's, it's complex to uh, support a software stack with lots of version, lots of different uh, hardware, and having uh, only one version on the cloud helps uh, manage software stack to scale and to innovate. So it's a, it's, and if we bring the protection tool and the good isolation and the compliance to this new tool uh, that benefits of AI, that benefits of um, uh, high, uh, high compute, etc., then we will accelerate also uh, some uh, business and opportunities. And so what you're saying is that your scaling up and your diversifying helps them, helps more people get that security on, in the cloud and therefore enables them to develop their business. Yeah, sure. Uh, lots of industry, bank, health, aviation uh, are benefiting, uh, are, are requesting high level of security, but they also need some agility <laughs> and uh, merging both protection, security compliance, and cloud services uh, will accelerate the business. So, my final last words, famous last words. Famous last word, what? <laughs> 30 seconds? Yes, <laughs> second. Uh, just uh, to, to put it uh, in a nutshell, uh, security persuasion for invest, invest in security is uh, literally the story of my life <laughs> since uh, more than 20 years. Uh, I, I dream of a world where individuals, companies uh, are mature enough to understand that cybersecurity is the way to get a good business, to make a company resilient, uh, to, to make a company, a company trusted, and so uh, initiate the growth also. But it's not yet today. <laughs> but I will, I will continue. I will continue. So as more services are offered, more maturity, therefore, greater opportunities will present to them, right? Exactly, exactly. The more maturity in cybersecurity, the more trust, and so the more business also. More trust, also. and the more. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas, Marc, Florian, Julio, and Charlotte. We really appreciate your interventions today. It was very useful. Uh, please join me in giving them a big round of applause, and thank you for your contributions as well. <laughs>